Okay, we're going to uh, try to use post-production to fix up a white screen shoot. We tried using the white screen video production techniques uh, to shoot uh, some students making a message for our YouTube channel. And um, although things went pretty well, we still had some flaws that showed up in the background. Uneven lighting and even cables and things that got in the way. So there are two ways in post-production that are relatively easy to fix these things and, and improve the overall look. And here they go. The easiest way, method number one, is to use the built-in effects that we have in Premiere Elements 12. And that's what we're using right now. And the specific effect that we can use is a keying effect called uh, a garbage mat. And you have 8 point, 4 point, or 16 point garbage mats you can use. I'm going to use an 8 point for this particular clip and just drop it right on top of the clip. And when you do so, it may not be really apparent because... Well, that's interesting. Oh, there it is. Took its sweet time showing up. The clip has an effect applied to it right now, and we can see what that effect is if we open up Applied Effects and click on the header for 8 point garbage mat. And you can see what you can do is start moving these handles around to show only part of the area of the clip and the rest becomes transparent. You could use this for picture in picture and other effects as well. Now you also notice that we're left with a big black background which is uncomfortable but we can fix that too. Uh, if you can't access the handle because it's a little bit off screen, right mouse click the preview window, go to magnification and shrink it down a bit. Then make sure you click on the effect. You can't just click on the monitor itself, but if you click on the effect, you'll get access to those handles again. So, this is step one of the first method. Next, we want to get a, a big white background and impose it in there, and, and we'll get a perfect white background, and we will try to put it somewhere that is logical, probably up here, uh, so that it doesn't disturb anything else. I'm going to go up to a track up above here somewhere and choose a location to put it. I'll put it right about there. So to get a white background there, and then I'll move it later on, um, Project Assets. I'm going to go to the menu, I'm going to go to New Item, and I'm going to look for a color mat, which lets us make just a card of any color, and I'm going to choose something that is going to be as white as I can get it. That's 255 for RGNB. Say OK, and there it is. Now this is the part I'm finding a little bit tricky. When we did this, you'll notice it sliced. And it actually put it in place too. Took the color mat, it put it in place, and sliced through our, our whole timeline. So I wonder if I undid that, Control Z undoes it, that restores our timeline, and then I can go back to the project assets, it still exists there, and I'm going to put it on a track that is a little more benign down here that's not going to interfere with anything. So if I put it down here, good, slips into place, no problem. And now we have that nice white background behind there. Now you'll notice that we also don't have we don't have a, a particularly good blend at this particular point. Neither did we have a good blend at, at this point too. Oh no, this was the original clip. Uh, but once you put the garbage mat in, it shows the weaknesses of the production. So now we're going to do a little bit more post-production to this, grabbing that clip and hitting to the effects again. We're going to go look for an advanced adjustment called an image control, and just apply a little bit of image control to this thing to see if we can brighten it up a bit. When we click on the clip, go to the Applied Effects again and select Image Control. It just takes a little bit of work. We take the uh, brightness up a little bit and take the contrast up a little bit. And I'm going to try not to let it wash out the subject, but the combination of these things, a little bit of brightness, a little bit of contrast, increasing them, seems to get a nice blend between the perfect background and the production that we did. So there's probably the easiest fix that we have available to us. Now. If that doesn't work for you, if you wanted to try something else, here's a second thing you can do, creating your own Photoshop garbage mat. I'm going to start by getting rid of this. I'm going to take a few steps back here, get rid of the image control and get rid of the 8 point. And I'm going to get rid of that white background too while we're at it. Okay, so method number two goes like this and you can do way more sophisticated things with the second method, but it is a little trickier. First, I would like to get a screen grab at this particular frame to get a sample of what the colors kind of look like and try to get things blended in here well with it. To get a screen grab, I'm just going to choose that frame, go to Publish and Share, choose Computer, as though I was going to render this thing as a movie, and I'm going to take the option near the very bottom called Image. And under Image, I'm going to change it to a preset that gives me a 1080p size, decent resolution. I'm going to save it in the same uh, folder as my, my original project, and I'll give it the name White Mat. Alright, 
and hit save. And it generates the image and we're done. Next, I'm going to go over to Photoshop and I'm going to open up that same image. File, open. And let's see, where was it? Oh yeah, it was called White Matte. There it is. Just a screen grab. Now to turn this thing into something that has some transparency and some opaque, I'm going to start by making a new layer. And what I want to do is I want to basically paint this whole layer white but carve a hole around where the subject is. I'll do the carving the hole part first actually by using the lasso tool and setting a feather to 40 pixels I can select around the outside of them fairly generously and if I just kind of drag that over it completes it. Now you notice I got a little bit more going on here it's kind of going to encroach a little bit on the subject. And now I want to paint that with a perfect white color, the way we made the, the color mat the last time. To get a perfect white color, you can just click the little button down here that defaults to the foreground and background colors of black and white. And I'm going to flip them around so white's in the foreground. Now to fill this up with the white color and block out the background, I could use the paint bucket, but I prefer holding down the Alt key and clicking the Delete key once. Oops, did something wrong. Undo. That filled in the inside. First I want to select and inverse so now I'm selecting the outside and then I'll do the same thing again alt delete and that gives me that selection around the outside control D gets rid of the selection now you'll notice that you might see a little bit of the dingy gray down at the bottom and the blend worked really well because our production was pretty good at the top um, this little haze at the bottom you can use it or not if you want to get rid of it just use uh, an eraser tool and a nice big brush like a 300 feathered brush and you can erase that. And what's left is a background and the, the uh, white mat. I'm going to turn off the background and you can see what's left here is the transparency. So this is the thing I want to save and pull back into Premiere Elements 12. So I save this thing in a compatible format. I'll go File and I'll save for web. Nice and easy. And I'll choose a PNG 24 format with transparency and say OK. I'm going to save this. It's going to be saved with the same name, whitemat.png, except it's got the PNG extension. PNGs let you have the transparency where JPEGs don't. And I'm done with this. I don't need it anymore. I'll go back to Premiere Elements, and I'll get it into my project assets. Open up the assets and right mouse click a new, a new compartment. Uh, I will get media from files and folders. And it was called whitemat.png. There it is. Open it up. And now I just have to put it on a track just above where the cl original clip was, so I'll just kind of put it right about here and see how that looks. Fold it back up, and sure enough, it's done the job. We have a perfect white around the outside, a feathered gradation uh, into the background, the, the normal background, and if he doesn't flail, move around too much, he should blend in pretty well. If he flails his hands or anything, it's going to show up. It's going to look like he's going. his hands are going behind frosted glass. But you could reuse this thing on earlier clips as well. You know, as long as the subjects are relatively centered, you, you can use this over and over again. And it's not an awful lot of work. So there's your two methods. Um, give it a try. See if you can improve your white screen production in post. And we'll see you with the next tutorial. Good luck.